Tamron is famous for high magnification zoom lenses, especially the lenses like 18 to 200, 18 to 270, 16 to 300, and 20 to 300. They even have a fantastic telephoto zoom lens, which is the 152 to 600 G2 lens, which is a fantastic lens for uh, wildlife and sports photography. Today, we are going to talk about that one new lens which Tamron released earlier this year, which is the world's first ultra zoom lens at 22.2x zoom, Tamron 18 to 400. A couple of weeks back, I had an opportunity to use this particular lens from Tamron uh, for a couple of days and I used it along with the Nikon D500 and uh, here are my first impression about this particular lens and a very short review. Uh, there are basically five points based on which I evaluated this lens and uh, this is in lines with what uh, generally a person would pick this up uh, lens for. Uh, the type of audience that this lens is targeted for is usually a beginner in photography who wants like a one lens which can do all sort of photography and has an extreme focal length and also for travel photographers who wants to travel very light and have that one versatile zoom lens in their bag. Let's get the review started and here are the top five plus points about this lens. The number one has to be the size and the weight. At about 700 grams, which is the Nikon mount that I personally had, this is one of the most lightest 400 millimeter lens that you can get in the market. And if you see any of the competitive 400 uh, millimeter lens in the market, either from Canon or Nikon or even Sigma, I don't think so there is any lens which can weigh anything less than 700 milligrams. Also, Tamron uses what is known as a 3 cam barrel design and it makes the lens very compact and also you can see it in this particular uh, set of photos that I am using this in the extreme focal length of 18mm as well as the 400mm. This lens is extremely small and it's very handy and uh, when you are travelling with this particular lens you don't feel that you are carrying a very heavy lens because this is a type of impression when you get when you are using a 400mm lens especially something like a Canon 100 to 400 millimeter. If you use it for an entire day uh, in a safari or when you're shooting sports, it becomes uh, very uh, sort of tiring as well as it gives you a sort of fatigue feeling when you're uh, hand holding that particular lens. But this lens has no such uh, drawbacks and it's a lightweight and a very compact lens. Number two has to be something to do with distortion. Uh, when you're talking about a lens which has about 18 millimeter at the lower focal length and a lens which a travel photographer might use it for something like architectural photography, the distortion is one thing that comes into mind. And this particular lens, I had no issues with the distortion. You can see some of the examples here wherein I shot all the way from 18 millimeter to 400 millimeter. There is no evident distortion, be it the barrel distortion or a pin cushion distortion, which is uh, present in this particular uh, lens and I feel that this is very versatile and this particular lens is very good for architecture photography when you're using it for travel purpose. The third thing has to be the telemacro feature. At a maximum magnification of 1 is to 2.9, I personally feel that this telemacro feature is one of the big plus points of this lens. This will avoid you carrying an extra macro lens either for the close-up shots of people or probably even the insects or even the flowers when you're shooting out in the nature. You can see a couple of examples here in wherein I shot a couple of flasks and in different scenarios. The detail that you get out of this lens at this particular magnification is very good and very handy and you can definitely use it as a macro lens too. The fourth important point that I want to mention about this lens is the moisture resistance. Tamron claims that this particular lens is weather sealed or weather resistant too. So you can notice it in the construction that there are rubber gaskets which are present which comes in between the camera and the lens which makes it waterproof. Uh, during my couple of days of usage of this lens, one of the days when I was out in the field, it was drizzling and I continued to use this particular lens out in the field when it was drizzling and I had absolutely no issues with this lens and the, the rain or even the wind had no impact impact on my shooting. So that weather sealing is extremely important for travel photographers who are out there in the field and things like probably a, a slight uh, uh, dust storm or probably even a uh, drizzle should not stop them from using it. The fifth and the most important feature I liked about this lens is the vibration compensation. 
This lens comes with about 2.5 stops of vibration compensation. This becomes extremely handy because you're talking about a focal length of 400 millimeters and which effectively translates to about 600 millimeters in the 35 millimeter format. So at this particular focal length, if you're doing handheld shooting, the vibration compensation is extremely handy because even the slightest amount of shake can introduce a lot of blur in your images. So having that vibration compensation, especially the 2.5 stops of VC is definitely a big plus point for this particular lens. So these were the five points which I specifically liked about this lens when I was uh, out there in the field using this particular lens. But having said that, uh, no lens is perfect and this is no exception. Uh, this lens does come with a couple of negatives that I want to talk right now. And the first thing that I want to highlight about this particular lens, which I don't think so can be uh, something which we can expect to be corrected, is the aperture range. This lens is rated about 3.5 to 6.3 and at about 400 millimeter, this lens has an aperture of about 6.3. Uh, this is a bit of a challenge when you are shooting indoor sports or probably uh, when you're shooting wildlife in low light, like something in the evening. So this forces you to bump up the ISO and thereby probably getting a grainier image. So this uh, specific thing about having a 6.3 aperture at 400 millimeter is sort of like a limiter factor for me and I would have ideally expected it to be a 5.6 lens. Right now we are in 2017, I think it's a little bit too early to expect uh, an ultra zoom lens to have a fast aperture as well but probably in the years to come we might even end up seeing an f5.6 or an f4 ultra zoom lens probably from Tamron itself. The second thing about this lens which I was particularly not happy was the zoom through. Uh, you're talking about an extreme focal length in this particular lens which is 18 millimeter to 400 millimeter. Especially when you're going from 100 millimeter all the way up to 400 millimeter, the zoom throw is a little bit too small and the angle of zoom is a little bit too short. So you notice that you go from 100 to 200 to 400 very quickly and one uh, noticeable thing especially when you're going in this range is that the zoom range is a little bit too stiff between 100 to 200. This forced me to look at look up on the web whether it's an issue with my copy or probably the existing uh, version of the 18 to 400 lens has a problem. So I did notice that a lot of other photographers who have picked up this lens or probably even reviewing this lens had a specific issue about the zoom ring being a little bit too stiff uh, between 100 to 200. So this is something to do with probably the construction aspect of it. Uh, I'm not really sure if it can be addressed by Tamron immediately, but probably in the future lenses, this is something which they might want to give it a thought on because this is a type of focal length and this is a type of lens which can be used for videos also and having a very stiff uh, zoom ring uh, might introduce a lot of uh, jerkiness in the video when you're trying to do the smooth zooms and uh, things like that. So that's it for this first impression and first look of the Tamron 18 to 400 ultra zoom lens. If you were to ask me whether to whether this particular lens uh, is a win or a bin, I would personally say win. So when I'm using the word win against this particular lens, I'm evaluating it against two points. One is the competition and second is the price to performance. So on the competition aspect, uh, definitely Tamron 18 to 400 has no competition as of this day in the market. So that gives it a plus point. And secondly, when it comes to the price to performance, at the price that you're paying for this lens, which is about 55,000 Indian rupees as of the date of this review, this is a very affordable lens, uh, either for the beginners or for travel photographers. And it's an extremely versatile lens. And you can, you could have probably observed it in the image sample that I've shown throughout the video. And the images that is coming out of this particular lens is also very good. The, the colors, the sharpness, and even the contrast of the images are very good. So I definitely feel that this is a good buy for the people who have APS-C cameras and want that one single lens solution for all their uh, travel or probably photography needs. So this definitely is a highly recommended lens from my perspective and hope you like this particular video and if you really liked it, hit the thumbs up button and if you want to see more of such reviews and opinions about new gear that is available in the market, please make sure that you subscribe to the channel for further uh, videos. This is me Shiv signing off and I'll see you guys again in the next one.